And in keeping with that story, which has actually been trending so much today, I'm joined by the deputy spokesperson for Kampala Metropolitan Police, uh, Luke O. Oesijide. Good evening and welcome to NTV Tonight, as always. You're welcome. Good I think evening. with the, the trending topic and how the word is out, it mm. is safe to say that this is a good measure for you to actually be here and answer a few questions. Mm -hmm. So welcome to NTV Tonight. Thank you very much. Flavia. Yes. Um, so I've just been talking to you off the break and said, is there different police presence mm. at Macquarie University during any of the lockdown phases? And as you've said, no. Yeah, actually, uh, Macquarie has always had security. Uh, we have the police station that has personnel. Yes. And uh, those are the personnel that are, are in charge of the security of the school yes. and uh, the premises at large. Yes. Now that there's no school per se. There's no special Yes, security. but they still stay on the premises. They still stay so on the premises. So despite the lockdown measures, we shouldn't yes. have LDUs on the premises of Macquarie University? No. None that you're aware of? Uh, not despite not the story coming out, do you believe there's actually a misunderstanding of who LDU was on the, on the premises or not? Well, I wouldn't uh, want to call it a misunderstanding. These mm -hmm. are things that can be thoroughly investigated and we get to know the yes. whole truth behind it. So inquiries are ongoing, like uh, our, uh, like uh, my bosses uh, informed you in the morning uh, during uh, the press conference uh, at a media center. Yeah. We do have suspects who are actually given statements, who have actually given occurrences that happened that day and are also uh, working, uh, that, that are also in pattern with uh, the CCTV footage that was gotten from uh, the bank nearby. If you have CCTV footage, which mm. according to who have looked at it, maybe it's clear yeah. and gives you sort of a picture of what happened. Are there mm. seven out of 10 people who are arrested uh, thanks to the CCTV footage or eyewitness? Uh, eyewitnesses, uh, mm -hmm. of course, and the CCTV footage. Okay. Yeah. So again, is it clear? footage of who exactly and what exactly happened, you've had a chance to look at it. Well, I haven't. Uh, I, 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 can define, I can define clear. Define. Clear is to say that I can absolutely with certain say that that is look or Sijiri and not Flavio Tumsimi on that footage. Well, you see, footage cannot be supported alone in courts of law. Absolutely. It cannot be supported alone. We have people who are at the scene at that particular time. I would say the security guards, actually yes. who who actually informed us of what exactly was happening. They yes. recorded statements into mm -hmm. uh, what exactly transpired at that particular moment. But those don't form and the 7 out of 10 who were arrested? No, they don't. So I was saying that 7 out of 10 who were arrested, mm -hmm. was this all a deduction of the CCTV footage? You were saying oh, that was a witness? It, so they it was witnesses and the CCTV footage. And the footage. CCTV footage. Yes. So um, curfew is 7 p.m. Yeah. Um, we say the victim was out beyond 7 p.m.? Uh, the victim, uh, uh, according to our reports, yes. and uh, the support of, uh, like I informed you, the CCTV footage, it was 10 p.m. It was 10 yes. p.m., well way into the curfew time. Yeah. So if, to say it was a mob that actually did this, the biggest yeah. question that everybody's been asking is, who would be part of the mob? I mean, there's campus police, the students who would not dare to be out, we assume, beyond 7 p.m. Mm. So who would form a mob of 10? Or who, well, who is part of that? group that has been arrested. Does this involve students? Mm. They say international students are still on the premises. Mm. Is, is it campus police, witnesses? Who's included in these witnesses? Who else well, is on the premises? So far at this time, let's call them residents. Residents let's call them of residents. Macquarie University. Yes. Now, we spoke about LDUs earlier, mm. and there was stories of students outside the campus saying that they were being harassed by LDUs who were patrolling. Have you followed up on the story? Any facts on that? Uh, Flavia, you all you have all been seeing the stories that have been happening countrywide, yes. even here in Kampala. Mm. Whenever each, uh, whenever any student can, or any person has come out to complain against, let it be LDUs or, or our police, police officers, mm. we've always taken action against those police officers. Many have been arrested and are still battling cases in courts of law. Both our both the, you know, the UPDF has its own court yes. and also our criminal courts here. Mm -hmm. And cases are still ongoing. That so is to it say does you take up the case. We always take up cases mm -hmm. whenever they are reported. So it really, if something bad happened to you and you really don't report it and we just see uh, you giving interviews uh, in the news, mm -hmm. it becomes something new to us. But we are always willing to take up such cases. I was thinking to myself, a curfew in such times, mm. is it as you're part of the implementing force, is it for fear 
or to protect us as citizens from what could happen in the medical terms of, since we're in COVID-19 times. Because I'm thinking if you're implementing this and my fear is me bumping into police or bumping into LDUs despite I'm, for example, out until this time. If for whatever reason I'm not able to mm -hmm. quickly say who I am and why I'm out beyond a certain time, you know, is, is the curfew time supposed to in, infuse fear in the citizens? <laughs> because most would be f afraid to be out at a certain time despite a good reason for being out at a certain time because of the stories that have come up during lockdown. So yes, we've not had a COVID-19 death, but there's fear around COVID-19, you know, implementations and things like curfew. Uh, well, uh, Flavia, curfew is not supposed to instill fear in the public. Well, mm -hmm. we all know this is... Uh, uh, part of uh, the statutory instrument mm. and uh, this is something that we are trying to enforce as uh, uh, the law, law enforcement. It is not something that came from the police, it is something that was uh, properly packaged, I want to ask you, mm. and uh, they informed us about what we, we are supposed to enforce yeah. and we are enforcing that. Well, they say you are supposed to be uh, inside uh, by seven. By seven. And I'm telling you, go on the streets of Kampala. A lot of people are either still in traffic jam. Beyond seven. Beyond seven. Yes. Uh, maybe because there was too much traffic, maybe because of the rain. Which you would, as implementing would force, understand. understand. As it is not a matter of just arresting anyone. There yes. are factors that are out there that any officer enforcing can really understand. Mm. People have emergencies at night. Yes. And you really want to go out. Trust me, if you uh, inform these officers at the checkpoint, they will always listen to you. And many of them have had very graceful journeys from their places to their uh, places of emergencies. Okay, with a good explanation, of course. Thank you so much to Luke Owe, the Deputy <laughs> Spokesperson for Kampala Metropolitan Police. We still continue with the story.